Hi everyone! We've just finished a deep dive into sliders, talking about how they work and how to edit them. In this episode, we will finally make some sliders and put them to use converting four different meshes from one size to the other so that the items will weight slide properly in Skyrim. Here's what we're going to do today. We will first make a body size conversion slider and then apply it to the demo shorts to turn the size 0 mesh into a size 1 mesh. Then we will do the same thing for the demo armband. For the belt, we will do it two ways. First using the body, and then using the original belt meshes to create a slider because that will give us even more precise morphing. And doing the belt both ways will give us a chance to see how using the body versus a different mesh affects the final conversion results. I noted in a previous video that sliders made using the body itself are the most useful, so let's go ahead and make a body size conversion slider. I'm going to make mine using the UNP body, but you can use any body from Vanilla Skyrim or a body mod male or female. All you need are the size 0 and size 1 body files, and it's best if you use nude versions, when available, so that there are no other meshes in the NIF except the body. Bring in the size 0 naked body, either female body underscore 0 dot NIF or male body underscore 0 dot NIF, then select the body mesh, go to slider, new slider, and give it a name, like size 0 to size 1, and hit OK. Then click the pencil next to the slider to enter edit mode, go to slider, import slider data, and import NIF. Navigate to the matching size 1 body file, select it, and hit open. Click the pencil again to exit edit mode and that's it. If you get an error message when you try to import the size 1 NIF, then it means you are using the wrong body file or the body mesh is not the first BS tri shape in the NIF. Remember that a slider can only be made from one shape to another if both shapes have exactly the same vertices in exactly the same order. And that Outfit Studio will import the first BS tri shape in a NIF. So be sure the shape you want is the only mesh in the NIF, or at the very least, it's the first shape that's listed. If you need to, you can create and save a new temporary NIF to use as the import version where you've deleted all the other meshes and just isolated the body mesh or other mesh as a single BS tri shape. Just be sure that the mesh you want to import matches the size 0 version in terms of number and order of vertices. Okay, so we've made a forward size conversion which goes from size 0 to size 1. Let's also make a backward size conversion so we can morph things from size 1 back down to size 0. Before we make the slider, we have to set this body so that it starts at size 1. Move the 0 to 1 slider to 100% and then go to slider, set base shape. We now have the size 1 body and the slider has reset itself back to 0%. For our backward slider, we need to make the body go from size 1 down to size 0, so with the body selected, go to Slider, New Slider, and give it a name, like size 1 to size 0, and hit OK. Click on the pencil for the new slider, and then go to Slider, Import Slider Data, and Import NIF. Navigate to the size 0 body file, and this should be the original one that you started with to make the first slider. Select it and hit open. Click the pencil again to exit slider edit mode. When you move this second slider, it will morph the body from size 1 back down to size 0. But do note, the first slider will not work properly for this body anymore and that's because it currently starts with the wrong size shape. To finish up, let's fix that by resetting the sliders so that the reference shape is back to size 0. Simply move the new slider to 100%, which puts the body at size 0, 
and go to Slider, Set Base Shape. Now both sliders should be at 0% and the body is the size 0 body, so we are ready to use the top slider again whenever we need it. I recommend saving this as a project so you can reuse these sliders anytime you need. Go to File, Save Project As, and then type a name in here. Hit To Project, and the rest of what's in here does not really matter since you won't be using this in Body Slide. Hit Save, and you are good to go. For more information about saving projects in Outfit Studio, please see my video in this series about managing projects. For this example, we are going to use our demo shorts from video number 35. We made a lot of changes to create and refine the size zero shorts NIF. Most of us probably don't want to have to do that tedious work again, so let's just make the size one shorts from the size zero mesh. Bring in the size zero shorts mesh, which should be called shorts underscore zero if you have been working through this tutorial series with me. To apply a slider to meshes that you load into Outfit Studio, we first have to set our sliding mesh as the reference. For this example, the sliding mesh is the body, so right-click on it and Set Reference. Then we have to conform the shapes that we want to change so they will move with the slider. Go to Slider and select Conform All so that all the meshes in our list will change at the same time. We can go with the default values in the pop-up window so just click OK. Move the top slider to 100% and have a quick look to make sure nothing looks terribly distorted. If it does, we can edit the slider by clicking the pencil and then using the Undiff tool on a selected mesh to remove vertices from the slider action. Remember that we can also use all the other tools in Outfit Studio to edit the ending shape. But our shorts look OK, so I don't think we need to do any of that. With the slider at 100%, which is the size one body shape, go to Slider and Set Base Shape. And now we have our size one version of the shorts. Select the shorts and leg band meshes, export them as shorts underscore one, and that's all there is to it. Remember that even though we've used the body here to create the slider, you don't have to put the body into the outfit, and we shouldn't put it in the outfit for these particular shorts. A final note before we go to our next example, you can put the slider anywhere you want and set the base shape there. Since our slider was created to match the size 1 body at 100%, we need to set our base shape at 100% of the slider. But you can get creative with sliders in many ways, so just remember that you aren't limited to just 0% or 100% for setting the final shape. For our second example, we will use the size 0 armband that we made in video number 36 and make the size 1 version with a size conversion slider. We can't just use the size 0 to size 1 slider that we used in the last example because we set a new base shape at the 100% point, which means that the reference shape is now primed for a size 1 mesh. We can use our backward slider, the second one, at this point to morph something from size 1 back down to size 0. But we don't want to do that for our armband because it's already at size 0. So instead, we need to reset the slider. With a forward and backward slider both in this project, this is super easy to do. We just put the second slider at 100%, which is the size 0 shape, and then set base shape. And bam! Now we are back in business and ready to morph another size 0 shape up to size 1. You'll note that since we still have the shorts in here, and they are still conformed to the slider, they have moved again. We don't really care about this since we are done with the shorts and hopefully you exported them in the previous example. But to stop this from happening, we can select the shorts and the leg band meshes and go to Slider, Clear Slider Data, and click Yes. And that will deconform them so now they stay still when we move the sliders. 
Now for the armband. Bring in the size zero nif, and this time, since we only want the armband to move, select it and go to slider, conform selected. The default values are fine for this since it's a tight fitting mesh, so click OK and then move the top slider to 100%, which is the size one shape. Check around to make sure you're happy with how it's going to look. Remember that you can use the undiff tools or any other tools while in slider edit mode to refine how it's going to turn out. Once you're happy, click the pencil to exit slider edit mode and then move the slider to 100%. Go to slider, set base shape, and this locks the armband into the size one shape. Make any final edits if needed to fix clipping or tidy up the mesh if it got a little distorted by the slider action. Then export your new size one NIF. And remember, you can just select the single mesh, in our case, the armband and export that. Close Outfit Studio, optimize your NIFs in NIF scope, and then hop into Skyrim to test things out. Way back in video number 12, I showed you how to save masks so you can delete exactly the same vertices from both sizes of an outfit. Remember that both the size zero and size one versions must have identical vertex count and vertex order or else it won't weight slide properly in Skyrim. So what happens if you delete vertices from one size of a NIF, but you forgot to save the mask and you can't delete exactly the same vertices on the other size? Well, we can just remake the other size from the one that you've already edited. So let's say I deleted some vertices on the size one version of the demo belt and then exported that as a new NIF. And now I need to make the size zero version. In this case, we can use our backwards body slider to turn the new size one NIF into a matching size zero NIF. Since we closed Outfit Studio after our last example, we have to open it back up and load in our size conversion slider. Hopefully you did what I've suggested and noted where to find yours, or you know where to find it because you watched my video about managing projects. If not, you can make it again quickly and temporarily following the steps we did before. And this time you only need the backwards slider because we're going to go from size one to size zero. So I have loaded my size conversion project up and I need to prime it to start with a size one mesh. So I move the top slider to 100%, then go to slider, set base shape. And now the bottom slider, which is for size one to size zero is ready to use. I load in the new belt, then I go to slider, conform all and click okay to use the default values. Then move the size one to size zero slider to 100% and go to slider set base shape. This will lock the belt into its new size zero shape. To finish up, export the new size zero belt NIF, optimize both sizes of this belt in NIF scope, and then add the new belt as either a replacer or a new item and test it in the game. For our final example, we're going to do the demo belt again, but this time use the original belt meshes to create our size conversion slider. The reason we're doing this is because it should give us a cleaner result compared to using the body slider. First, let's set up the conversion slider. Remember that we are starting with a size one mesh and we need to make size zero. So we have to make a backward slider. Bring in the original size one belt NIF, select it and go to slider, new slider. And then you can give it a name or be lazy like me and just click OK since this is only temporary. Then click on the pencil, go to slider, import slider data, import NIF, and then navigate to and find our original size zero belt. Then click the pencil to exit slider edit mode. Move the slider and test that it looks good. It does, so go ahead and right click on it and set it as a reference. I like to hide the mesh at this point so that I can easily see my new version morphing. 
select the new belt mesh that we want to change and conform all or conform selected, either one, then click OK to keep the default values. Move the slider to 100%, set the base shape, and now you have your new size zero belt mesh. Select that and export it. Now let's see how the results compare for the new size zero belt, depending on whether we use the body slider or the belt slider to create them. I think it's a cleaner conversion when we use the belt. So remember that you can use any two matching meshes to create sliders and that using meshes that are most like the mesh you want to edit can give you the most precise morphing. Just remember not to save this slider or any one-way sliders after you have used them because once you set base shape, you have changed the slider itself. The old 100% shape is now the new 0% shape. So as a general rule, don't save sliders after you have used them. If you make both forward and backward sliders like we did for the body, then you can quickly swap between the two without having to reload the project. But if you make only a one-way slider, you will need to either reload it each time if you've saved it, or just remake it if you need to use it again. I make lots of temporary sliders. You can set them up pretty quickly, use them for what you need, export the NIFs, and then unload your project without saving them. Size conversion sliders can be really useful and save you time and effort. But this only works if you remember a couple of important points. First, you have to make or load in the right slider for your mesh or outfit. For example, it has to be the right body type, like UNP or CBB or whatever, and it has to start at the right size so that 0% matches the mesh you want to change and 100% is the new shape that you want it to have. Likewise, if you have the slider loaded first, make sure you load in the right size of the outfit for the slider. For example, our saved Size conversion slider is meant to start with a size zero mesh and morph it to size one. You can go the other way if you made the backwards slider, but you would first need to prime the backwards slider by moving the zero to one slider to 100% and setting the base shape. Then you can use a second slider that goes from one to zero in order to go the other direction. We've worked through four different examples in this video, but this is just a starting place. Now it's your turn to get clever and think of other ways that you can make size conversion sliders work for you. Of course, we can make all kinds of other sliders too. In our upcoming videos, we will be working on body type conversions and sliders are one great way that we can do this. So stick around and I'll show you how. Thanks for watching this video about size conversion sliders and I'll see you again soon. Bye.